So now we know how polymerization reactions work, the question is, if we've got a polymer, how do we figure out what the monomer was? Or the other way around, if we have a monomer, how do we figure out what polymer it's going to form? So here I have two polymers, polystyrene and Nomex, and two monomers, chloroethene and dicarboxylic acid and diamine. Let's try and find the corresponding polymer or monomer. So if we have a look at our two polymers first, so we have polystyrene and Nomex. So let's take a look at polystyrene. So polystyrene, here we can see that we have this repeating unit, and if we have a look, there aren't any particular carboxylic acid groups, aren't any nitrogens. Chances are that this was actually formed from a polymerization reaction rather than a condensation reaction. So if we have a look and see, well, what kind of monomer would I need to make this? Let's drop the structure. So this is my repeating unit, and at the moment it has a bond to either side. So, if I was to do this in a polymerization reaction, hopefully you can see, if I removed these bonds and replaced it with a double bond in the middle, then that would give me the monomer that I need. So the monomer is styrene, which we could also call ethyl benzene. So that case was particularly easy because it was a radical polymerization. Let's have a look at another example. So here we have Nomex, and so the first question we have to ask ourselves was it a polymer what type of polymerization reaction caused this? Was it an addition polymerization that caused this, or was it a condensation polymerization? I've got this diamine here, and I've got these double bond oxygens to carbons. So that's giving me a little bit of a clue that this probably could have started off as possibly this could have been a carboxylic acid, and this could have been a diamide. So let's have a look and see what would it have looked like. Let's suppose that the bond that was formed in the condensation polymerization reaction. If we do that, then we suppose that this started off as a carboxylic acid, and then we also had a diamine. So, so the original structures would have looked something like that. This must have been a condensation reaction, not a radical polymerization or a chain polymerization reaction. And so our starting materials or our monomers were a dicarboxylic acid, this one here, and a diamine. So now let's have a look at, if we have the monomer, how do we figure out what the polymer is? Well, we've got two examples here, chloroethene, and then we've got a carboxylic acid and a diamine. So let's have a look at chloroethene. So chloroethene doesn't have a carboxylic acid or an amine group or alcohol group. So I think I can rule out condensation reaction. So this would have been caused by a radical polymerization. So let's see how the monomer looks. So there's our monomer, and this is going to be converted into a polymer. And so what I anticipate is that the double bond here will be broken, and that will provide the electrons to form the bonds between monomers. So the long chain should look something like this. And now we just need to know how we're going to name our polymer. So normally we name our polymers in radical polymerization after the monomer. So we had chloroethene, also called vinyl chloride. So we're going to call this new polymer polyvinyl chloride, also known as PVC. Let's have a look at the final example. So here we have a dicarboxylic acid and a diamine, and we want to figure out what will the polymer look like what would be the structure of the polymer formed from these two. So in this case, you can see that I've got X and Y written here. So they just here. X and Y. So in this case, it's actually possible for those carbon chains to be of any length. But for simplicity here, I'm just going to assume that both X and Y are 1. So in this case, I can see that one of these groups is a carboxylic acid, another one's an amine. So that means that I can undergo a condensation polymerization reaction. So if I do that, let's see what happens. So as we can see, these components here that I've just circled are going to become the water that's released and we're going to form a bond between this carbon and this nitrogen and our molecule will look like this. So here we go. This is pretty much the smallest repeating unit of my carb, uh, of my polymer. The only thing is that 
obviously these groups here are only going to occur on the ends. So if I want to write out the structure in a way that takes into account that these are going to be bonded to the next repeating unit, I'll just put a bond in the place of the OH group and of the hydrogen and I'll get and this could be my repeating unit. 